Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. <clears throat> Permit me first to indicate that the two young men whom we have seen here, they're homegrown talent. But in our community, we may not have the requisite infrastructure to develop formally the homegrown talent. So in each of those cases, and there are several other cases, these young men and young women who are skilled in the field of music, these two are graduates in music from the, North, from the Edna Manley School of Music of Jamaica. It is one way in which we carry out our functional cooperation within Latin America and the Caribbean. In the same way, we send our students to Cuba. and elsewhere. Excellencies, my comments today are made under the title SELAC, Faith, Fresh Hope, and Love. So my, excellent, my dear brothers and sisters, my friends of our Latin American and Caribbean civilization, and other special guests who are here. On behalf of the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, I welcome each of you to our archipelagic homeland of 32 islands, a magnificent component of our Latin American and Caribbean civilizations. Please be assured that it is also your home of faith, fresh hope, love, and solidarity. <clears throat> In our landscape and seascape resides permanently the spirit of the indomitable Joseph Chateauier in the same heroic pantheon alongside Toussaint Louverture, Simon Bolivar, Jose Marti, Fidel, Chavez, and Chedi Jagan, and other titans not of mythology but of lived struggles for our people's humanization and the integration of what Marty simply called our America, a geographic locale of 33 independent countries bound together since 2011 as the community of Latin American and Caribbean states. St. Vincent and the Grenadines your host, holds an especial place in the historiography of our America. There are several notable features of this small but special land of which you may not be aware. Permit me to refer to some. First, St. Vincent and the Grenadines had the shortest period of the enslavement of African peoples in our hemisphere from 1764 to 1838. Our, our rugged terrain and the militancy of our indigenous people, the Kalinago and the Garifuna, kept colonialism at bay for over 200 years. Secondly, St. Vincent and the Grenadines had a population of free Africans before enslaved African bodies arrived in 1764. Among these free Africans who were here before slavery were runaway slaves, so-called runaway slaves, from Barbados, and some who survived a terrible shipwreck. They were embraced by the indigenous Kalinago, who came to our country over 2,000 years earlier from the Orinoco. This is a land of Silak, from the Orinoco. Their offspring formed a distinct nation, the Garifuna. The Garifuna are the only people of African descent in the hemisphere who are never enslaved and never submitted to enslavement. Thirdly, 
In St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the last and longest continuous struggle, a 31-year guerrilla war against European colonialism occurred from 1764 to 1795, in which latter year our resistance was defeated by British colonialism and our leader, our sole national hero, the right excellent Joseph Chateauier, was ambushed and killed. In victory, British colonialism carried out a large-scale genocide against the Kalinago and Garifuna, isolated some 5,000 of our patriots on a nearby inhospitable island of Baliso, B-A-L-L-I-C-E-A-U-X, populated only by lizards and iguanas. Within six months, one half of these 5,000 patriots died from a lack of food and water and assorted disease. The remainder were forcibly transported to the Bay of Honduras on Rotten Island. From there, they and their descendants established Garifuna communities in Belize, in Guatemala, in Nicaragua, and in Honduras. This land, which we call St. Vincent and the Grenadines, is known to them and our indigenous people as you remain. It is blessed by our ancestors and their struggles, and it is watered by their blood, their sweat, and their tears. That is why, in addition to singing the anthem in English this morning, there was a verse which was sung in appreciation and in respect for our Kalinago and Garifuna brothers and sisters. It was sung in the language of the Garifuna people. Our inheritances are special. We are metaphorically a symphony. We are the songs of the indigenous people, the Kalinago of the Orinoco and the Garifuna. We are the rhythm of Africa, and we are the melody of Europe, and we are the chords of Asia, and we are the homegrown lyrics of the Caribbean. Like all symphonies, there are from time to time dissonances. And we address our dissonances. But we are indisputably an integrated whole. We are part of an island and seaboard civilization. A land of liberty, democracy, and progress made by our own hands and brains in solidarity with our friends and allies. And we guard our independence and sovereignty jealously, and we treasure solidarity. Our SILAC was formed out of a confluence of predisposing and inducing circumstances. And there are two persons who are here at the occasion prior to SILAC's formulation, the original meeting in Bahia, my dear brother Lula and myself. My dear brother took a sabbatical, and I have stayed on since then up to this period. <laughs> our, nations, our nation's common history of European conquest and settlement, the monumental crimes of native genocide and the enslavement of African bodies, the condition of indentured servitude, the undemocratic gubernatorial governance arrangements of a rapacious colonialism, the struggles for the reclamation of sovereign independence and popular democracy, our contemporary battles against imperialism and an iniquitous political economy of global monopoly capitalism of which my brother, the Secretary General, spoke, our quest for sustainable development and inclusive societies, and our geographical closeness have all conspired to predispose us towards creating CELAC. The requisite glue of solidarity 
of purpose and action in our contemporary times in pursuit of peace, justice, prosperity, and security for all, based on the popular will, induced us to establish this celebrated regional integration mechanism, SILAC, a community of sovereign states. We gather in St. Vincent and the Grenadines for SILAC's eighth summit at a time of extraordinary global challenges of great complexity, awash with multiple contradictions. These impact significantly on our America and specifically on our people's lives, living, and production. These externally sourced encumbrances and burdens, which restrict or constrain the scope of action of our people, are made more complicated by homegrown weaknesses, limitations, confusions, and conflicts. Despite our strengths and possibilities, inclusive of those resident in the genius of our peoples. Even with our own burdensome travails and setbacks, we have advanced commendably. We, by and large, we are ordered societies with thriving civilizations and a material base reasonably supportive of uplifting lives and living. We are thriving civilizations. We do not need lessons from anybody about we having civilized life and living. We in SILAC have a roadmap for confronting meaningfully our challenges, encumbrances, burdens, weaknesses, and limitations. And from our inherited and extant conditions, we have set forth accordingly a package of policies and programs to advance our people's interests. Our draft declaration of Kingstown, of nearly 100 paragraphs, which I expect to be adopted unanimously today, contains the necessary and desirable pathway on the 12 headings. You have the declaration. I don't need to repeat those rubrics. Additionally, there are nine declarations on specific subjects which we expect to be adopted today. Over the past year, since the election of St. Vincent and the Grenadines as the pro tempore presidency of SILAC in January 2023. Relevant initiatives were undertaken within each of these broad frameworks. The Minister of Foreign Affairs of our country reported earlier on these, and you would have noticed that this very small country, who many persons doubted our capacity to do this job, we had a very active year. It is up to you to judge whether we did well or not. It is still necessary, though, to summarize certain highlights of functional cooperation, advocacy, and mature regionalism, including the platform for food security, the push for enhanced air and sea transport, the elaboration of health, the, health, the health sufficiency plan, the proposal for the establishment of the Latin American and Caribbean Center for the development of science, technology, and innovation, the joint promotion of an environment for open, secure, stable, accessible, and peaceful information and communications technologies, the coordination of efforts to address the issues of climate change and disaster mitigation, including the promotion of the climate adaptation and comprehensive national disaster response fund, the FACRID, of SILAC, which Mexico and Argentina initiated and which we have put some resources and I ask all members to put resources to this particular response fund. And the consideration of the Caribbean Sea as a special area in the context of sustainable development. And then there was the initiative of our country to activate 
the Technical Working Group on Afro-Descendants of CELAC, an enhanced activism for reparatory justice, including the promotion of CARICOM's 10-point plan for reparations, and the activism in maintaining the Caribbean as a zone of peace, including the sterling efforts to reduce tensions on matters consequential to the border controversy between Guyana and Venezuela, which resulted in the Argyle Declaration of December the 14th, 2023. In the latter regard, that is to say of the Argyle Declaration, CELAC and CARICOM, without any involvement whatsoever from any foreign source, because the foreign sources in Guyana and Venezuela have been seeking to create confusion, but without any foreign involvement, CELAC and CARICOM, in solidarity with Guyana and Venezuela, convene the Dialogue for Peace at Argyle. This homegrown effort by CELAC and CARICOM has had many architects and builders. But St. Vincent and the Grenadines is duty bound to recognize the extraordinary contributions to this process of peace building by President Lula of Brazil. <laughs> President Petro of Colombia. Pre President Diaz Canal of Cuba. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt of Dominica and the Chair of CARICOM at the time, and Prime Minister Mia Motley of Barbados. However, without the wisdom and maturity of two highly esteemed leaders, my dear friends and brothers, two combatants for peace, President Ali of Guyana and President Maduro of Argyle, without them, the Pact of Argyle would not have been possible. We thank, too, the tremendous effort provided by a great man of peace, Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations. <laughs> Excellencies, over the past year of our pro tempore presidency, we have come to realize more than ever that although the shortest distance between two points geometrically is a straight line, Mountains, especially political mountains, cannot be scaled by way of a straight line. It is necessary, if not always desirable, to make zigs and zags in the ascent of any political mountain, while bearing in mind the goal is to arrive at the mountain top. Thus, the zigs and zags must never restrict us in a cul-de-sac or a dead end. So compromises in a complex world are required in our pursuit of peace, prosperity, and security for all. This, the understanding of all this is fundamental to life and living in the real world. Suffused as it is with contradictions galore, which are to be resolved or at least muted. Having understood this matter, we then apply our hearts to wisdom in arriving at a mature judgment. This has been a major lesson of history, including that lesson taught in the sacred texts of the Hebrew Bible and the Holy Quran. Accordingly, it is, a distressingly, pain, it is distressingly painful to witness live on television the intransigence of the government of Israel and its small and dwindling number of defenders in the perpetration of genocide against the people of Gaza and the Palestinians generally. In our draft declaration, we are demanding, among, among other things, an immediate ceasefire, ample humanitarian assistance, the observance of international law, a resolution of the peaceful resolution of the conflict, and a two-state solution as repeatedly endorsed by the United Nations. <clears throat> the 
Similarly, the terrible ordeal in Ukraine must come to an end with negotiations for peace. The continuation of this sense, continuation of this senseless war has the potential of leading humanity into a nuclear Armageddon. In our region, our beloved Haiti, the land of Louverture, continues to be in turmoil and conflict. The government lacks popular legitimacy, and it has been ineffective. One alarming statistic is that in January 2024, more Haitians, over 1,200, were killed in Haiti than Ukrainian combatants in the war with Russia. The country is gripped by a political, humanitarian, and security crisis. The UN Security Council has adopted a framework for a resolution, and the Caribbean community, of which Haiti is a member, is seeking with Haitian stakeholders to fashion an appropriate political and governance path forward. But at the end of the day, this is a matter profoundly for the Haitian people. They are required to make judicious compromises without compromising their own values in the interest of the people of Haiti. Perfection must not be made the enemy of a good transitional stage in post on the way to peace, security, and a democratic way of life. At the recent CARICOM meeting in Guyana, I am satisfied that the Prime Minister of Haiti has recognized what we are saying here. And he has moved from a position, frankly, of what I consider to be intransigence, and he has made compromises. It is now for other stakeholders in Haiti to make compromises on the governance question as we address within the framework of the United Nations Security Council, the security and humanitarian and developmental dimensions. Excellencies, as the leader of a small, very small country, please permit me to state a few essentials born of our experiences. We tell everyone, especially those whose very essences prompt them to demand subservience from us, those whose instincts, instincts drive them towards imperial or hegemonic rule, that this country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, will never permit any other country to dictate to us. We will never allow anyone to choose for us our friends and allies. And we do not, for those who think that we can be bought with blandishments, we do not put a for sale sign in our metaphoric shop window. And determinedly, we are not for sale. As a small country, I need to emphasize this so that the message can get clear that we are not like that. We, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, are not better than anyone. But no one is better than us. We are small. But we have a history of authenticity, of struggle, of achievement. We possess a nobility. We are a special part of the great Latin American and Caribbean civilizations. And we have a trajectory for further ennoblement. We rely on the genius of our peoples in a continued quest for self-mastery, but always in solidarity with like-minded peoples the world over. We are friends of all, and we strive for a different and better world. Later today, 
St. Vincent and the Grenadines passes the torch of the PTP of Silac to the Republic of Honduras and its leader of inestimable value and virtue, President Xiomara Castro. On January 23, 2023, in Buenos Aires, President Castro, President Castro proclaimed defiantly, we are the resistance. I understood fully what she meant. And I am most pleased to be led by her for the next year in SILAC. And it is expected that Honduras will be succeeded by the Republic of Colombia sometime in March 2025. I want to congratulate my dear comrade sister and thereafter my dear brother, President Petro. I thank all those who have assisted St. Vincent and the Grenadines over the 13 months of our leadership of SILAC. I make one final plea to my colleagues gathered here. Let us, over the next year, fashion a permanent and nimble secretariat for SILAC so as to secure, to, so as to ensure that its monumental tasks in this challenging global environment be optimally addressed. As in biology, structure follows function. There are functions to be performed by SILAC, which cannot adequately be performed with the current structure. I am calling for us to give serious and urgent consideration for a permanent and nimble secretariat for SILAC to carry out its requisite functions. As I conclude, the words of the distinguished poet of resistance of Guyana, Martin Carter, ring in my ears. And so, if you see me looking at your hands, listening when you speak, or marching in your ranks, you must know, I do not sleep to dream, but dream to change the world. In Sila, we must not sleep to dream, but dream to change the world for the better.